Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. Alright, today we're going to do a quick little unboxing video here of one of my latest acquisitions. I picked up three games recently. I picked up Lost Valley, Dien Bim Phu from White Dog. I also picked up the classic Winter War uh, from S&T. And the game we're going to look at today... For unboxing, dun 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 dun, Conquistador Vulture sits upon your silver sheath, and in your rusty scabbard now, the sand has taken seat. That's right, it's the Conquistadors. If you don't recognize that song, that's Conquistador, Proco Harem. Um, I had no idea that was them until one day I stumbled across it with my serious thing. And I've heard the song before, just had no idea. So we're going to take a look at the Conquistador, the Spanish Conquest of the Americas from Compass Games. This recently came out, designed by John Southern, um, who's one of my favorite designers when it comes to um, World War II stuff. I love the classic carrier, the new carrier battles, or carrier battle, Philippine Sea is coming out, uh, allegedly later this year. And uh, also, of course, the classic Tokyo Express, among other games that he's done. So let's take a look inside the box and let's see what we got. First of all, we got a big, thick, sturdy box, and you're about to find out why. It's nice looking. That map looks very promising from the box. So let's see, does it live up to the promise? Oh, you can hear it banging on the table. So there's quite a bit here. Let's see what we got. We got our standard dice. We've got uh, cards. We've got strategy cards. These ones are sealed. So let me see if I can quickly get those open. I just took the plastic wrap off. I didn't do anything else, but I don't see my tweezers either here. Hmm, well, that's unfortunate. I wonder what I did with them. Well, they're usually right here on this table. Well, to quote the dude, that's a bummer, man. Let's see if I can get this open anyway. Ah, there we go. I don't worry too much about the edgy cards because I'm going to end up just leaving them if I like the game anyhow, so, okay. So you have different strategy cards here in the game. Um, action cards. There are asset cards that you can do also in the game. Um, there's combat cards that are available. Um, here, I'll tell you what, let's just do it this way. Asset combat cards, uh, reaction cards, each one's a different color, that's cool. Action cards, so you can see that we got a, a variety of different cards there for gameplay. I have read the rules online, I haven't actually read the rules in the physical copy here, but that's the basic cards that are in the game. And I got more of those here, but the packaging seems to have broken open. And up, along with these asset cards, of course, naturally, we have the Conquistadors themselves. Cordoba. There's another reaction card. And I'm going to see if I can find some other ones here. I'm trying to find what's his name, of course, you know. If I can find him here quickly. There he is, Cortez. And my fav personal favorite, Ponce de Leon, because I... Uh, I've been to Florida. Actually, you may not be in this game, come to think of it. Oh, there he is, one Ponce de Leon. I've been to Florida. I've seen, I've seen the cross he laid down, and I asked to drink from the Fountain of Youth. Well, the alleged Fountain of Youth. I will just say this. I remember when we were there, they told the story that they said most people lived in that time to about the age of 40. Ponce de Leon drank from the Fountain of Youth quite a bit, lived to be 64, and only died because he got shot in the knee and died of gangrene. Otherwise, he could have kept going for a while. So there's the Conquistador cards, which you will need, according to the rules, for your expeditions to lead them, actually. Okay, rule book. Let's back out a little bit here on the rule book. There we are. Okay. Um, I mean, it's in color. It's um, hmm, kind of fairly basic, the way rule books go today. That's interesting. Yeah. There are examples of play. Cause like I said, I read these online. There is a solitaire version too, by the way, which I will get around to if I like the game, naturally. But um, yeah, pretty straightforward 
Uh, from what I read, too, it's pretty... I mean, this is pretty basic. If you've done war games before, you should have no trouble. Oh, oh what is this? I feel like Arlie Army. What is this? Oh, my. There's a whole sheet of errata in the box. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, obviously we'll have to keep that handy, won't I? Ay, 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 ay. Of course, with a game like this, because, you know, this game partly is a narrative game. You've got lots of tables. Discovery, you can do diplomacy, um, gold that you can get, combat, the governor's table, because you got to stay in the governor's good graces and get him to grease the wheels. You know, as uh, uh, Ronnie Dangerfield said in Back to School, you know, you got to grease the politicians to get things moving. Which is a great movie if you've never seen it, by the way. So there's a couple of those, because this is a game for one to five players. So there's like four of these. Oh, here's another set. Here's Plunder, Plunder Exhaustion. Because you get tired of lugging around that gold and running around causing trouble. Random events, morale, you have to watch your morale. And there are legends, which I think is a cool thing in the game where, you know, like um, El Dorado and all that stuff can be possibly found. Maybe. More than likely not, but it's possible. I mean, lots of things are possible. Counter sheets here. These are nice. These look like the Conquistadors. Nice and bright yellow. There. Then we got towns and gold plundered out, so you can easily see what's been gone through. Uh, here are the Native Americans, or Indians as they're referred to in the game. And um, in the notes, it says basically that's how they were referred to at the time, so that's the nomenclature they're using, because this is from the Spanish perspective, which, you know, makes sense. And here's another sheet here with the different colors, different groups, um, and factions you can have, so to speak, that you can command expedition or expeditions uh, in the game. So, um, very cool. They seem like they're nice and thick as well. Oops, I almost forgot. So I always like to do this for you guys. Let's see how the cards shuffle. See if it sounds good. Mm, little stiff, little stiff, little stiff. Let's try a smaller amount, see if it's any better. Eh, a little bit better. Not as pliable as some other games. Which can be both a good and bad thing, but not as not as bad as, to me, one of the worst ones ever is still the 30 Years War cards. They are so stiff. Oh, it's just, oh, it's brutal. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just brutal. All right, now, this game comes, hold on to your seats, everybody, you love mounted map boards, sit down now while you have the chance. This game comes with not just one, but two, that's right, you heard it, two mounted map boards. You have your northern map, which covers, of course, the Aztec Empire. Let me come back out anymore, yep, I can come back out some more. There we go. And goes up. Oh, it does go into Florida. There we go. Well, that's why Ponce de Leon's here. And then, of course, you have Cuba, which, of course, have been colonized at this point. It was, I mean, it was according to the notes and stuff. I got to get some of the books. That's one thing I like about the games is the bibliography. There's, there's a lot of books there. I got to look into that. I still got gift cards from family and friends from Christmas, so I got to take a look at that at some point. But you can see it's a point-to-point -point map, nice and colorful. Uh, the numbers are clear. The different levels of discovery. As you get deeper in, you get into deeper situations. So very, very cool. Sea spaces. The, uh, the uh, what am I doing with my finger? What am I doing? This is why I bought this. Blue spaces here for the sea spaces. Different levels of discovery. Okay, again, you can see as you move inland, things get more interesting. There's the legend spaces. Those legendary spots. So very cool there. So that's the north map. Each of these maps is 28 by 20, by the way. Um, and you don't use both of them at any one time. You pick one. So you can either go north or wait for it. You can go south. <laughs> so there's the south map. I don't think you use both at the same time. My reading of the rules, and maybe I missed something, but I thought you had to pick one or the other. So, but again, there's, um, there's nice color here. Looks good. You have spaces here for the cards, so maybe you do use both, because there was no space on the other map, was there? Uh-uh. The records track is on this one. Well, maybe you do use both in the, in the game. There's a basic game, a standard game, and a solitaire game in this, by the way, from what I read on the rules. Um, the standard game 
is a little simpler. You don't have some of the rules with a little more chrome. Um, I will say this from reading the rules experience, war gamers, you should have no trouble doing the standard game if you've played any war game of any decent complexity. So, like, I mean, above, like, Memoir 44, um, uh, Spears of Influence kind of level. If you've gamed beyond that, you should have no trouble with um, with the Conquistadors. So, every time I pull this out, though, and I look at the box, that Proko Harem song comes flying into my head right away. So, um, so you know what? Since I'm not sure about this, let me just take a quick peek here. Let's lay them both out together. I'm pretty sure you have to pick one or the other. Um, okay. Oh, no, they both have their own records track. But they don't both have their own place for the decks of cards. Let me come back a little bit and see if I can get both of them. There we go. I don't think I can make this thing go any higher. Can you? Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, cool. I thought I was at the highest level I could be. Let me look at the box here for a second to show y'all. So. So they both have their own records track. But this one, oh, let's see. But now see this one. Hmm, maybe we'll need to open up both of them. Um, because here's the governor's favorite track, which is not found on the south map. Um, the south map has the records track. There's one of those on each. But then this one has the impulse track, which is not found on the south map. That's interesting. Hmm. So I guess you will need... Well, I guess, well, yeah, if you play the southern map, you'll need this one out because you need the governor's favorite track and you need the impulse track because there's, um, die rolls at the bottom of each turn to tell you um, when it could randomly end. So impulses could end at any point starting with the end of the third turn. So, huh, that's strange. Because I didn't see anything on the cards that would leave you spaces for that. I'm not so much worried. I don't care so much about the decks of cards because I don't think that's a big deal. You know, you can put your three decks of cards wherever you want and stuff. And the records track is on each one. But this, that's a little inconvenient. Um, so, hmm. Okay, well... But again, I guess you can see here, because my table is pretty big. My table is like 86 by not quite 4 feet. Um, so, I mean, they're fitting comfortably side by side. So, I mean, I guess you could have this one out and have it off to the side for these two tracks. And then, you know, still use the, and do your conquering on the southern map. So, okay, so there you have it. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about this game for a while. And I've been looking for different things to try this year. Um... Because so far I have tried a couple of, of different things um, recently. Some of them have gone well, some of them have not. Um, but even last year, there was a lot of games that were brand new to me. Um, so I'm trying to branch out into other topics here. Uh, getting away from some of the well-worn paths that I know, but I still enjoy, naturally enough. I just finished playing uh, my ninth play of Verdun 1916 Steel Inferno and had a blast again with it. It is such a fun game. It's it still easily holds the top spot from last year, no sweat. Okay, so there is Conquistador from Compass Games, designed by John Southern. And uh, again, uh, I'm going to mess with this for a bit if I enjoy it and have fun with it. Uh, I know, I know, those of you waiting for Munich War, I know. Um, I'll probably do a video of this next before I move on to other things. I also had one of my subscribers ask about doing a playthrough of... Um, the basic Barbarossa scenario from the old Hitler's War from, well, basically 40 years ago. Uh, so I'm going to dig in, dig that out wherever it's buried and um, take a look at that. It's been a long, long time since I played that. But uh, it's still in my collection because I, I, I have a soft spot, I guess, because it was my first European theater game that I ever played. Um, of course, now I have other ones, you know, like Triumph and Tragedy that I enjoy immensely. And Black Swan is so much fun. Um, but that was my first, so um, so I might pull that out, push it around a little bit, do a demonstration and stuff. And again, you know, if there's games that uh, you know I hear me talk about, or if there's games that you see in my collection, if you go to Board Game Geek, that you would like to have a play of, or even a review of, uh, you know, let me know. Or even an unboxing, you know, if you're if it's an older game, even like I did Pacific Fleet last year. You know, if it's an older game, you're like, geez. You know, and I don't know if it's going to be worth it and stuff. Can't tell from the pictures on, you know, Board Game Geek and stuff. You know, just, just shoot me a comment in the comment section, and I'll be happy to go ahead and do that. All right, so there you go. Conquistador. I'm going to find my helmet here 
to get ready to roll uh, into the 16th century, which I have not studied any of this since school. I know the basics, very, very basics, but um, but yeah, I, I don't uh, yeah I don't I don't remember a whole lot. I know the basics, but so anyway, I'm going to take a look at those books too. That's in the bibliography. All right, so I'll get back to you. Uh, maybe I'll do if I like I said if I enjoy it. Maybe I'll do a two-handed solo one just to show what it's like multiplayer, and then also do the solo method, which I've read the rules for the solo method, and um, they very much remind me of Fires of Midway a little bit because you divide the the decks and the cards into decks of like enemy reaction cards and things like that if you're playing by yourself. Uh, so okay, so this is Tim Porchner from Bare Bones Wargaming. Saying thanks for watching, and um, I don't know what's appropriate to say here with the, the conquistadors. I'm not sure what expression they used. Um, I don't know. So, um, onward and upward, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, so I will see you next time. Possibly we'll play through this, possibly uh, some other options too as I continue to. Um, Experiment with new games, clunk through the rules, as I like to say, when you're going through the first time and stuff. We'll see how things go. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.